So the next thing I want to cover is the other parts that, um, the other challenges. So there we have the um, bracket, the globe bracket, that's what I'm gonna call it. And we have the base, and then we have this little round, off-center weird bulb nodule thing that was, again, rubbish. So I completely got rid of that. One of the problems that I did notice is that this casting of base metal, this really cheap Chinese crappy metal that's been chrome plated, um, it didn't sit level with the globe. The globe was on the piss basically and uh, everything didn't sit nice and properly so I didn't like that. So I marked out um, square the best I could do square uh, to the actual base there in pen you can see and basically just tacked it with a file and cut it down. The other thing is what well, I wanted to increase the thread size so I drilled that out. Now you can see that that's not centre drilled very well but then the original hole that I was starting with wasn't centred very well and when you stick it all together you're not really going to notice. Um, the next thing I did was to attack the base and because I drilled um, and tapped the bracket I had to drill and tap the base so it would fit. And there's me drilling and tapping that. So the next thing I wanted to do was to um, make some custom fittings. I didn't just want these bolts going into the poles to hold the whole bracket and the globe together. So to do these fittings I got a two pieces of aluminium, there's some, I think it's some 15, 16 millimeter stock, um, round stock, 60, 61 and a bit of rectangular flat bar. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the top section. Now I'm not going to tell you what these are, I'm just going to run through them and you'll see how they progress into what I want them to be. So I've just got a bit of the round stock and I drilled and tapped that and uh, cleaned up the outer diameter. I then started to thin out um, the main section of this uh, round stock and then marked out equal, I think it was six millimeter segments and then come in with a 45 degree cutter and basically just grooved it all the way along the length. You can also see that I've started to radius-ish, put some stepped radius lines into the, uh, the left hand side. I then flipped the whole thing, wrapped it in some copper tape so I wouldn't mar it and I'm left with this, you know, the uh, profile of the stock that I was left with originally. And then just started to round this off, cut steps, and then attack it with some files. And uh, basically make the uh, pummel on the end of a uh, sword handle. So the next thing I did for the other end of the um, polar axis is get another piece of round stock and then the same kind of thing machine the OD, thread and tap the center and I put a few little artistic little funky grooves in it and then flipped it around and started to machine the OD of that so basically I'm just left with this shaft with a thread in one end and these lovely little grooves, decorative grooves then I started to shave the whole thing down um, and I'm basically just doing this by hand, I haven't got a forming tool or anything, I don't have time to do that I'm basically just trying to make like a bullet tip. So now I've got this bullet tip, I then chuck it up um, with the uh, V block into the mill, and I got a nice brand new 10 mil cutter. And I basically just proceeded to machine um, one side to produce a flat on one side, like you can see. Now, unfortunately, I didn't make an ever so slight boo boo, I did drill too deep and tap too deep and it came out at the uh, as I cut this flat but you know in hindsight I could go back and do it again but it, you know, I've got a lot to do so uh, after I've done this you can see me there I've then laid this flat surface this nice new flat surface on top of the v-block clamp the whole thing in the mill and then I proceed to cut the other side so basically what we have is a bullet shape that has two flat sides and it has this bullet-ish profile. The next thing I did is clamp this up in the V-block in a vise and start drawing a design on it. And the design that I drew was the tip of a sword obviously and um, started to attack the design that I'd drawn on there roughly. Um, 
with a file and some sandpaper and what have you to make a handle for the sword and the tip of the sword. So once that was all complete I got some square stock and chucked that up in the lathe and yes it's a three jaw I couldn't be bothered with the four jaw this was just I just wanted to see if the process worked and if the process worked and it looked good enough I'd end up using it for the real thing. So I marked out the centre of this um, length of square stock, started to turn what looks like a mini pummel if you want to call it that, uh, that same kind of profile and then polished that up with a nice ball on the end and then put a little groove just, just to break up the, the contours really and then flip the whole thing, um, which I don't have a picture of unfortunately, but I flipped the whole thing around, repeated that same thing and the centre that I had centre punched I drilled a hole through that. So now you can see we're left with a handle um, with a pummel on the end and the handguard and the um, sword end, the tip. So back to the actual globe with all them things done in the background. When we stick that on, um, this is without uh, the actual bracket, the uh, globe bracket. Uh, you can see how this is meant to work, it's meant to be basically a sword handle skewering the centre of the pole and come out the other end and this is why I threaded um, both ends of these two pieces so that I could have them tightened down on the globe. Here's a close up of uh, one of the pole caps, the north pole cap, you can see the icebergs and all the other little pretty features. and. I then used epoxy glue, I think it was a two part epoxy, and glued these poles in place um, so they wouldn't move. So the next thing I did is move on to the bracket and the bracket was misaligned um, so I put some threaded rod through my new tapped holes that I put into the bracket and basically tweaked it with the vise, it's really cheap metal this stuff, it's rubbish stuff really, and just basically tweaked it into alignment using the threaded rod to give me a sense of where the axis of the globe was going to be and as you can see it's pretty much lined up on that picture and pretty much lined up on that picture so I was really happy. The one problem you can see from these other images is that um, where the threaded rod comes out of the bracket, so where the sword fix fixtures are going to go, you can see that that's not flat, it has a curve to it and if I do, if I put the sword fixtures um, onto this globe what's going to happen is because there is no threaded rod running through the whole thing the handle and the blade tip will go ski whiff they'll basically line up with this off this curved profile and it won't like the sword's going through it like it's broken um, I could put threaded rod through the entire globe but the problem is is then is that when you put your sword fixtures there'll be a gap so to remedy this I basically just got a file out and just flattened that surface and just that surface. So after I filed that flat the next thing I do is drill and tap the hole to accept the um, sword handle. Well no, on this one it's the sword tip. And then the next thing I do is I get a bolt, a little cap screw, not really bothered about the threads, and I machine the head off that so I've basically got this little uh, small diameter shaft that will stick into the actual um, uh, pole caps so the whole thing can rotate and then there's a bad angled picture of uh, the sword tip with the actual handguard the actual globe bracket and the pole cap all situated and put together and there's a picture of the tip it's not a very good picture but you kind of get the idea. So the next thing I wanted to do is that this um, entire globe didn't seem to fit, uh, sit high enough. The uh, sword tip is kind of um, shrouded by the mass of the globe and it's a bit in the dark so I kind of wanted to stand up the whole globe. So I got a bit of aluminium, um, drilled a uh, centre hole and then tapped that to accept an M6 thread I think it was, no an M8 thread sorry and then just started to machine uh, the exterior and try to get a nice finish on it with these inserted tools and then basically just started to uh, machine a, a kind of like pillar um, 
look to it. What I was going to do was kind of like a Roman pillar with the uh, scallops running down the side, but I kind of abandoned that idea because that's kind of a lot of work. But uh, jumping swiftly ahead there, you can see the whole globe. Um, and you can see that pillar that I've put in between the base and the rest of the bracket and what have you picks up the globe and so you can see the sword tip kind of running through it. And then the next thing we're left with is the base. There's a few things I want to, well, there's one little thing I want to do to the base. And we need to actually finish the detail off on the actual globe itself. So now the next thing I want to do is there's just a little um, customization, if you want to call it that, what I want to do to the base. The base is pretty much all right. There's no chipping or whatever and uh, the finish is quite shiny and quite nice so I'm quite happy with that that I didn't have to do anything about the base but there is one thing I want to do so what we're left with is um, we need to put the detail on the actual uh, map itself so what I did was is I ordered some paper online that is what you call water slip transfer paper it's the same kind of decals that you get in airfix kits um, for your planes and your motorbikes and your car models and stuff like that. Uh, you can buy two different variants, you can get an inkjet one or a laser jet and the printer we have at work is a laser jet so I opted for the laser jet one. So what I did is I went on to uh, Paintbrush and Paint.net, the um, open source, you know it's kind of like Photoshop and made some little scrolls that you can see there, these are all the names of the places so here you can see all the banners that I did on the paint.net um, with the kind of you know medieval text to it which has all the place names like Winterfell and King's Landing and so on and so forth and then one of the other things I did want to try which actually didn't work which was a shame was I wanted to put um, all the uh, coastal regions you know like the Summer Isles and I printed them in this the beige kind of sandy colour so I could put them on the black sea so I could label you know the shivering sea and stuff like that um, and there that's all I do I basically cut these out so the backing to this and you have to make sure if you're going to do this that there are two kinds of this paper there is the white backing stuff which means that it's printed onto white or there's the transparent and I've gone for the transparent because obviously I don't want this white border or white background so these are the transparent transfers um, this is just you know Westeros and it's beige so it's going to go into the, the you know onto the black sea next to the island and basically all you do with this stuff is like with the airfix kits you just drop it into water and the adhesive um, for the actual decal is um, a water base a water soluble um, adhesive and you just drop it in there and it just basically after a couple of seconds flakes off. Here I've got the printout for what I want to do with the base so I've got some of the um, houses, the, fa the uh, family house crests or emblems um, for each of the families and there's a 10 pence piece so you can see the size comparison and these ones are actually going to go onto the actual globe for where the families are mainly based so this is the first one you can just see there the flash is a bit bad it actually looks a lot better than this and you'll see that later on but you can see it says King's Landing there where King's Landing is and then I've got the Lannisters um, crest there and there's with the flash so you can see how it comes out and this is more what it'll look like when I put the lacquer on um, so the reflection of the transfers and the actual matte finish of the globe is all the same and there's Winterfell and the Starks banner and so on. So this is the problem I was talking about with putting the um, beige onto the black is that the printer um, basically cannot print white. Now you can get printers that can print white. They do have white ink, um, but in this case, the printer I was using doesn't have that. So when you actually look at the picture on the monitor it is the beige color backed up with white so it makes it a lot uh, the contrast is a lot uh, the brightness is a lot higher sorry but when you actually print it out onto this transparency it's lost that white backing so the beige kind of fades away and when it actually dries out um, as you can see here it's pretty much dried out as soon as I put lacquer over that it is going to disappear that is one of the problems 
Um, so I took them off and got rid of them because I realised it was going to be a problem before I even started. So that was a bit of a shame that I couldn't actually use um, the beige writing or the sandy writing in the on the actual black so there's no labels for the seas and what have you in the islands and stuff which is a bit of a shame but you know you live and learn here's a picture of the uh some larger crests that i printed out and one of the cool things was is that where the stark um wolf is i made that transparent and obviously because there's the shiny chrome finish on the base it makes the lion the lion's head kind of chromey and shiny and uh, took a couple of shots of that and then you can see here this is where I've spent a lot of time with a pair of tweezers messing about um, putting all the place names on and the different crests on the islands and there's a better shot um, with the flash and then that's pretty much it so that's uh, after I'd finished all the transfers and stuff I then used which is a car two-pack lacquer a matte lacquer because I wanted to keep that matte appearance if I made it too shiny it would wash out a lot of the, the crests and words and place names and what have you and a lot of the detail so I used a matte lacquer I actually covered the whole thing in the matte lacquer individually um, all the sword parts the base and the actual globe itself and there you can see I've put Game of Thrones uh, vertically on the stem I've put all the crests on the base and there's a bit of a close-up of all the crests you can see I've kind of tried to take pictures of with flash and without so you can kind of get a, the two contrasting looks. And there you can see the Game of Thrones um, title on the actual shaft. And there you can actually see the uh, finished article and you can see some of the wave patterns in the reflection in the oceans. You can see it says Dothraki Sea, I don't know how well you can see that. But uh, all the place names and that is the globe finished. And uh, I had a lot of fun, it was, uh, some parts are quite scary, but if you're just patient and try and think your way around these things, then it should all turn out honky dory. And just here's some close-up pictures, uh, I use different fonts for stuff like um, place names like the Frozen Shore and the Haunted Forest and then banners and the wall and stuff like that. And I tried to get as much detail on that I could. If I was going to redo this, I would try and get my hands on a printer that could print white, so I could have put some of the ocean names on. Uh, the other thing that I would do is I'd probably go for a bigger globe. Um, there's a hell of a lot of place names, and on this scale, I wanted to make the writing legible, um, but try and get as many place names on as I could. And obviously, with a bigger globe, you can add more place names and keep the font name uh, font size the same there you go just a couple of close-ups of what the whole thing looks like um, this was great fun for me I hope you enjoyed it I hope you you know you might have learned something I might want to give this a crack yourself and uh, yeah it was great fun so I hope you enjoyed it see you in a bit